Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here. And Signalis is a really cool game. I love it, and I've sunk hundreds, quite literally, 230 hours into it. And one of the things that's really been pestering at my mind as I've worked on various mods and various projects regarding the game is, could multiplayer Signalis be a possibility? And if so, what would it take to achieve that? That is the question that I'm really going to be talking about in the course of this video, as multiplayer Signalis is my next major project that I am working for, on in regards to Signalis. I want to note here, I don't have a script for this video, so if I'm a little tangential or random things, feel free to like skip 30 seconds if you want to skip a random Chris rant. Um, there is no script because I've been putting a lot of energy into trying to produce this mod, and I don't really have that energy, if I'm being honest, to write a full-blown script explaining everything. I, I just have the energy to be like, hi, here's an open dialogue. Um, one of the things I want to talk about very quickly is why I want City Multiplayer to be a thing. And there's multiple multiple reasons for that. One reason is a lot of the time when we have a game that's as beautiful as Signalis and as, as great as it is, you want to show it to your friends, you want to play it with your friends. And a lot of the times your friends will be like, I don't like that genre of game, or I don't like X, I don't like Y. And that is part of the reason why mods like CPM or mods like SIRS exist, to try to, you know, entice your friends a little bit more, like, hi, hey, you don't like the top-down camera angle? I can give you first person, I can give you third person. Hey, you don't really like some random nuanced detail? Well, let's try to see if we can fix that for you. And I feel like City Multiplayer is a really good way if you have these friends who are very reluctant to play the game, be like, hey, yo, I'll play it with you. The other reason being, you, it's going to be good for getting replayability with other people you meet through the Signalis community. The Signalis community is great. I've been sinking hundreds of hours with them. I love them, and they're all great people. And being able to play a game with them that we all own and bond over would be really nice, <laughs> if only it was possible. So, uh, moving into that question, is City Multiplayer possible? On the surface, really when I uh, actually started looking into the project, uh, my initial conclusion was no. <laughs> this would be way too large of a scale for something for, for me to pull off, for anyone to pull off. Um, especially when I looked at other games that have multiplayer mods. I mean, while Melon Loader has uh, games like Bone Labs and to a varying degree, if you look at Pepinex, uh, over on Cyberfunk, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk have multiplayer mods. So it's possible, it was very daunting when I looked at their open source GitHubs on how much code they had to process to get even the most basic of things to work. So for me, it really looked like initially this was not possible. I don't know if that's true anymore. Um, I, I very much think that this is a very much a possibility of something that I can pull off uh, and that can make a reality. Or else I really wouldn't be bringing it to the video format. So why do I think this? Uh, this mainly has to do with a, a concept that I am using to make this a possibility. And this really struck me when I was thinking about like problems regarding uh, making multiplayer mods, right? So usually multiplayer is handled via server, right? You have a uh, server communicates to player, player commands to the server, server communicates to player too. Think like Battlefield, right? When you play Battlefield, you sprint around, your position, your character, your damage, your everything, your inventory, it's all stored server side. It isn't stored client side. Actually, especially in, in multiplayer games like COD, the reason they store it all server side is because if you try cheating on the client side, the server would detect it and stop it. It creates more stability, and it's just something that like a lot of games do. By storing stuff on the server side, it's genuinely easier from a developer perspective, maybe not easier to implement, but easier to regulate. And that's a problem, you know? We, are, we don't got giant servers sitting in my backyard that I can boot up and be like, hi everyone, we're hosting Signal and servers from my backyard. Can't do it. Not possible. But what if we didn't store everything on the server? In fact, what if we stored nothing on the server? Let me, let me elaborate. When you think about Signalis and the core gameplay mechanics of the things that would need to be communicated from player A to player B for things to be successful, there isn't a lot, right? We don't need to know, really, Ellie's HP of player A or player B. We don't. If Ellie is sprinting around, Ellie won, let's say that's the main player, sprints around, gets one-shotted by a Storch, does that really affect player B? Maybe over the VC that they're playing on, the player B is like, ah, I died, it sucks, but like... It doesn't physically affect them. There's nothing in the code that should physically affect him. You know, it's not a team sport. We're not playing like Team Fortress 2 where I need to track how much HP each team has when the, when the flag goes up. That's not important information. So there are a lot of things in Signalis that fall under this category. We don't need to store animations because we don't need to trigger the animations. 
We don't need to store models. We don't even need to store what the player is looking at because none of it matters. The only thing that matters communicating player A to player B is information that player A sees about player B. What this means is if we use a system that lets player A send a message over the net to player B and player B processes that message and updates player, B's, player A's representation accordingly, we can stimulate pretty much faux pas multiplayer. It's not truly multiplayer, but from the player's perspective, it is. It would perform the same way. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. That's the exact um, intended idea of how this mod will work. How is this going to be done? Well, there's the server networking thing that's not really built for Unity, but is actually built for just general projects built in C-sharp, and that's called Wiggrin. Wiggrin is open source. It is basically uh, privately hosting a, a server on your own computer. Um, it's actually typically, from what I could tell from their documentation, used for like employees and stuff. We took that, and with the help of an amazing person on the Signalis community, who I'm a big friend of, uh, Z, we're able to repurpose it in a way that benefits for our project. We're going to use this Wigrin network to send those messages between player A and player B. And there's a lot of nuance that's still being worked out to make sure that system is perfectly flawless, but by doing it this way and using such a you know non-unity you know, subject and force and item, it, it lets us have the ability to uh, very much focus on the mentality of there is no true server, it's just sending messages. And that's going to make it actually possible for this project to exist. Um, but every project has some difficulties. Uh, before I really get into the difficulties, I want to like give you all a status update on you know how far into this I am. Yeah, it's, this is not me speaking like, hey, I'm day one project. I'm going to jump into this, everybody. I'll speak to you in three months when it's finished. Um, there is a working test build right now that has tested these ideas. And while some of them work, some of them don't, you know, there's definitely not something playable. It's not something we can show off. Um, the mentality, the core mentality of this project is, is finished. It's in concrete. It's something that can be demonstrated, meaning this project is, is realistic. It's definitely possible. What are some difficulties we've had? Well, the difficulties we've had have been uh, kind of strange. I'm going to be real. They're not like stuff you would think. You'd think with a multiplayer mod, Oh, the main difficulty is going to be like, I don't know, making Ellie's value appropriately represent what the message is being sent. Like, not, not really. Oh, it might be like figuring out which server side status to use. Maybe. we The servers haven't been heavily tested yet. But the main difficulties so far have actually been getting Unity's um, bullshit to work properly. Pardon my French here. Mais je ne parle le français par cette sentence. But... Uh, the, the first problem is insatiation. Um, so insatiation is a concept in Unity that essentially lets you duplicate an item. There's other ways to duplicate. I know there's probably going to be someone in the comments that like writes a fucking paragraph that's like, but you don't have to use insatiation. Yeah, but insatiation is really good. So in order to use insatiation, you usually have to be in the Unity engine because the code for insatiation isn't held in scripting. It's actually held in source code. If you're not a programmer, those words, don't worry about them. Um, what that meant is I had to manually call and satiate from our project. At first, I kind of viewed this as a red line where like a lot of stuff could really fail if this didn't work. And the good news I have to bring you all is as of the first test build, it works. We can actually call and satiate despite the fact that Melon Loader does not have access to the command. It uses some pretty advanced C-sharp you know, bullshittery to actually achieve it. But I'm very happy to say we can call and satiate, which is a major blocker in the way that is now gone. The next issue is storage of values. If anyone knows anything about OOP or object-oriented programming, I know that sometimes uh, shit gets overly complicated just because it's OOP and not because it's actually logical. This is especially the case because uh, if anyone knows anything about melon loader modding, you are storing everything in a class, which means you need to insatiate values of the class that may come out or in a focus because of scoping. To fix this, I just made a new class that is called storage that holds all our variables. I'm gonna be real, it's very duct tape. It's not like a great solution. I'm sure if I was a CS major, I'd be crying right now, but I'm not a CS major and it works. It works. I tested it. No problems with the class initiation. There's been no problems with the calling from the class. So to my knowledge, we're gonna keep that system. It seems to work. 
So those are the major issues. We had storage and insatiation. Of course, we're going to probably have some more issues down the line, but those are the ones that have been fixed and are ready as of the first test build. Uh, I do want to remark again, the first test build will not be public. I can't really trust um, something that is that buggy uh, going out, but I will keep you all updated when a, when a more secure build is done. Um, there's some other remarks I want to make about the first test build that I, I really just wanted to bring up. It, it's something where when I started this project like two weeks ago, I didn't actually think we'd have a test build this fast and neither did Z. Um, and I'm really happy to see that we do have a test build and we are already able to test some of these ideas and see what we can improve, see what we can fix to see if we can get a finished project out to the rest of the community. Um, but moving forward, I'm going to try to keep updates on my channel, on the community page posts page thingy. Um, Z might post some updates too. I'm going to talk to them about that. Uh, if you want to talk to either me or Z about any of the things, I'm in VSL, on off City Tord. VSL is linked below. City Tord's, I mean, uh, Z is also in City Tord and VSL, so you can talk to them about anything. Uh, but yeah, I had no script for this video, so I don't really know how to end it off properly. I'm not really good at uh, freelancing this, but hopefully you enjoyed my random babbling about this project, and hopefully you're as excited about it as I am. Um, I'm really tired, so I do need to get some sleep, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you're excited for this project, and until next time, this has been Christopher Beast. Ciao.